Yo, what's going on guys? Dustin Hansen here. We are going to start working on getting a few lines hooked up to the FD. Um, as you guys saw before, I went ahead and I took the fuel hanger over to Nex. And we got a dash 8 and dash 6 bung welded on. So we are going to go ahead and throw that in, swap the hanger over, and run... Um, dash eight and dash six lines uh, for the feed and return and get rid of the OEM hard lines because those are too small to support the horsepower we are shooting for. So let's get this thing pulled out of here and hook these lines up. Hey guys, we got the FD all jacked up. Um, as you can see the stock fuel lines and one of the charcoal canister lines. And then the small one on the left there is a brake line. It goes to rears, but we're gonna go ahead. That's what we're deleting. Um, I'm not filming too much of it just because it's on the car and it sucks. Um, you can see there they are coming from the fuel tank. You can see I have uh, the light is the blue cover going into the trunk. So that's where the fuel lines run. And then they run over here up and I'll have to take this off, but um, you can see kind of there's a that 180 degree bend that goes to my fuel filter right there. It's a air motor fuel filter, it's aftermarket, but so we're gonna be relocating that most likely uh, up there in the front by the firewall. That way it's easier access. But yeah, so this is what we're getting rid of. This is what I'm talking about. We'll keep these trays that way, it has a little protection for the. Uh, dash 8 and dash 6 lines, but we are getting rid of all three of these uh, a common Upgrade as well for you guys who don't want to do this is to most people get rid of this charcoal canister um, Line charcoal canister is right there It's for emissions uh, most people get rid of that and they just run a Y fitting to the um, vent tube so you'll have basically two um, these are almost equivalent to dash six AN. I think they are five eights, three eights. I could be wrong. I can't remember, but uh, they're close to s the dash six AN lines, and a lot of people will do that. They'll run a Y pipe uh, feed to the vent, and a Y pipe back out to the um, fuel rail. So that's a common upgrade. But we're just gonna go ahead and run a dash eight. Uh, the only time it'll be exposed is through this little section here so I might add some sleeving protective sleeving over it just to help with rocks and stuff like that but let's get to it all right so fuel pump is out Ooh, look at that nice blue nice premix um you can do this put a rag down or a, uh, a towel or something I should have I knew it was gonna happen but I you know, slap drop the ball uh, I'll spill a little fuel, of course, when I pull it out, but yeah. There's inside the fuel tank. Um, not too rusty. Nothing crazy. Uh, back when I was in Japan, I ended up cleaning this thing out because it was super rusty. I'm glad to see that it's not really coming back. Finally, I got the OEM hard lines out. It wasn't too bad. Uh, super easy. The hardest part was getting... All these lines off up here but i ended up cutting them and now i gotta pull figure out how to finagle the last uh few tubes out um i need to go ahead and take the fuel filter off as you guys know that thing sucks to take out it is up here um above the subframe you can see right there that's where it is i'm gonna take out uh, those two bolts right there here you go underneath behind the subframe and it's kind of a pain but i do that yank those lines out and then we will start hooking up the dash eight and dash six all right so i have um dash eight and male to dash 10 o-ring um for this fuel filter obviously it goes right here you guys will have to do your own research this is dash six and we need a dash eight coming out so we had to upgrade these little fittings. And then same on my fuel rail. Um, my fuel rail is a dash uh, six O-ring port. 
and so I did go from dash 6 to a dash 8 a.m. So you have to do your research, obviously, depends on what rail you have, what um, uh, fuel filter, all that kind of stuff. So for now, we're just going to swap everything over because we need to figure out where I want to mount this guy. I think we're going to go up where the original um, line, the fuel lines connect on the firewall, but we need to test fit everything and see, see what and where it will fit nice and easily. So let's go ahead and swap these over. You can see the difference here. So same size. This is the dash six. This is the dash eight. You can tell it is a big difference in um, the hose. So we will have definitely enough fuel to support 550 horsepower, no problem. My hair is a mess, I just woke up. But anyways, uh, I figured I'd pause and tell you guys, I'm sure not everyone knows. If you're making AM lines and you're cutting it with a grinder, that is perfectly fine. However, you'll notice when you look inside the hose that there'll be like uh, bits of metal, or sorry, not bits of metal, uh, bits of like rubber, like nasty shaving. So um, I always just go over and take the aero compressor, blow it out really good. And then of course, before I install these, I'll run gas through them. And then that way it'll push out any debris because obviously you don't want that going into your fuel injectors um, or your fuel filter. So always do that. I forgot to mention it. I kind of just do it and off camera, but yeah. So always run, always clean your lines up before you put them on because it will definitely gunk up your fuel filter and your fuel injectors if you don't. All right, guys, so this is where we are. We just kind of zip tied it, and then I put um, some, a bunch of, like, it's almost like electrical tape. It's called, it's like an F4 tape. It's like a rubbery uh, tape just there, so it won't, the zip ties won't chafe through or anything like that. And same thing, like, above there, we put some, and then I did the whole thing in the same tape uh, right there. It's not, it's pretty much just protected from the elements, so... And I left it up here. I don't think we'll have any issues with it really going up there. Um, man, I need to redo all this. It's a little crusty. You need to paint a subframe. But yeah, so you can see there it goes. And then it's in the plastic cover. And it goes all the way back. And I still need to do up there. But yeah, so this plastic cover will protect it from um, the bottom side. And this is all coated. See it, and I also powder coated these arms. I need to replace this hardware. I uh, wire wheeled this guy. Same thing over here. So it's all nice and new. Besides the uh, screws, ooh, someone broke a screw off in there. Yep. So we need to finish that and then hook everything up there. All right. So a little update. We have the uh, dash six right here, and that goes onto the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator. And then we need to put our feed. You can see this is still a dash six from previous that was connected to the uh, OEM hard lines that goes down there to the front of the rail so we will have to go ahead and take this off and then I need to run there's a fuel filter I need to run a dash eight from there to there so I got to take this little uh, piece off as well on um, this fitting so we could put a dash eight adapter since that's a dash six but for now we're gonna go ahead and yank basically do the bumper um this thing's easy it's only held on by two screws but we're going to take off bumper intercooler i'm still debating I'm, if i want to paint the turbo or not if i want to paint it black or if i want to leave it the oem cast color i don't know i think it does make it pop more but we are i'm debating i think i might go ahead and take the upper intake manifold off throttle body and the elbow and paint it all the same color black because that's kind of like a wrinkle black it's more like a gloss black. Yeah, you could tell in the camera. And it just doesn't look as good. So I kind of want everything to be all one matching color. So I think we're going to go ahead and yank off all this stuff. And it'll be easier for me to get down to that um, fuel rail. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now. Fuel lines are all hooked up. Finally, we have our return going right here. It goes to the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator. And then we have this 90 coming off down under the oil 
uh, fill up neck and down there to our fuel filter. So now I'm gonna touch up some minor things. Obviously you can see I took the upper and take manifold off. We are going to paint it all the same matching black. And then I still don't know what I wanna do with this turbo. So uh, we'll, we'll see on that. But um, yeah, so that's it with the fuel. Now all I have to do is um, I have to wait for a buddy to come over. He's gonna turn the key. And do you want to set your fuel pressure with the vacuum line off or the engine off? So what I do is um, just have him turn the key, prime the fuel pump back there, and then watch it right here and do that over and over and then adjust the fuel pressure as I go. So that's the end of this video. Um, I'm going to save the painting and all that stuff, put it all back together, get, and I guess I'll film um, doing the fuel pressure in the next video. I'm far, far, far behind the videos. I haven't even released the turbo when it first failed yet. So I'm like six videos behind. So I will get these videos out to you guys. But uh, you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.